Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Fish. Let's just jump straight into your questions. Have you seen the new Chapman ML3 Pro Modern Semi Hollow? I'm thinking of getting one, but I want to see your take on it first. Yeah, uh, bro, that thing looks sick. I don't consider myself a semi hollow guy, but I'm getting kind of semi hollow curious if you know what I mean. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, a couple months ago, Chapman Guitars announced the ML3 Pro Traditional Semi-Hollow, and uh, you know, if I'm honest, I wasn't really feeling that one. Spec-wise, it has the ML3, which is like a Tele-type body made of mahogany with a traditional F-hole, a flame maple veneer, front and back lower spoon cuts, and a rear tummy cut. It has a roasted set-through maple neck and fingerboard, dual Chapman P90 pickups, and a three-way pickup selector. Then it has all the regular appointments from the rest of the Chapman Pro range. Hip shot grip lock open tuners, a graph tech nut, stainless steel frets, rolled fingerboard edges, lumen lay side dots, brass saddles, strap locks, a hard case. The Chapman Pro range guitars are pretty specked out. I mean, I'm sure it feels great being that it's a part of Chapman guitars upper range, but I wasn't into the vintage honey burst finish at all. Then enter the ML3 Pro Modern Semi Hollow. Most of the specs are the same, same body shape, wood combination, hardware, but this new one has a modern shaped F hole and instead of P90s, has a Chapman Magical Humbucker set, which is a pair of reasonably high output Al Nico 5 pickups. Then that obsidian burst with a matching headstock. Damn, it looks good. Both the traditional and modern variants are exclusive to the US, and you can only get them through Guitar Center. And they're priced exactly the same at $9.99 a piece, so if I was buying one for myself, I definitely know which one my money would be going towards. That being said, as far as demos go, I'm a huge fan. It's great to see what they're accomplishing over there. I'd love to make videos on just about anything Chapman guitars related. A regular ML3 Pro, a Bia, a British Standard Ghost Fret, the new upcoming Rob Scallon 7, which, side note, in that transparent black stain finish looks so unbelievably dope. And it's got a Floyd. That thing looks incredibly fun. But they're a small team, they're incredibly busy over there, and because we're based in different time zones, it's hard to coordinate anything. So far, we've only been able to set up the one video of the ML2 Pro Modern, and that was back in September of last year. I mean, I've used my own ML2 for the EMG Bonebreaker and Fishman Kill Switch Engage videos as well. Sorry, I always get distracted by this flame maple top. But I've been hounding them for an ML2 standard for over a year, and it took them like six months to send me a return label. So I'll talk to them at NAM and fingers crossed, but yeah, no promises on any demos. If I do set up a semi-hollow video though, what's your preference? Traditional or modern? Let me know in the poll. Thoughts on Fender's new American Performer series? Yeah, so it's been a busy couple of weeks for Fender. There's a new Jimi Hendrix Strat that looks pretty fun in that purple finish. It's got reverse mounted American Vintage 65 pickups with a reverse slant bridge pickup and a reverse headstock. Definitely not your average Strat. It's like looking at a Strat through a mirror. There's Flea's new signature active jazz bass, but their biggest announcement is that they've actually released a whole new line of American guitars called the Performer Series, and this is their replacement to the American Special line. It's the latest Fender Series to get the refresh treatment. First, you had the American Professional Series that was released about the same time last year that replaced the American Standard Series. I demoed the American Professional Strat a few months back and really liked that. Then you had the Made in Mexico Player Series that replaced the non-American Standard line of guitars. Now Fender has given us the Performer Series, and in typical Fender fashion, there are just about a million models and finishes available. Well, obviously not a million, but you know what I mean, a lot. So first, the features that are common to all the models in the guitar range. According to Fender, the newly designed Yosemite pickups are handcrafted in California and custom voiced for each guitar so each position is musically useful. They also have new vintage style classic gear tuning machines, satin finished necks, 22 jumbo frets, and what Fender is calling their grease bucket tone system. Basically, they say this will let you cut the treble without losing gain or clarity. There's six different models in the guitar range, all with alder bodies and maple necks. First up is the Stratocaster. The special feature with this one is that it has a push-pull tone pot that activates the neck pickup regardless of the pickup selector position. There are four different finishes. Arctic White and Honey Burst come with rosewood fingerboards, while Satin Lake Placid Blue and Penny get you maple instead. Next is the Stratocaster HSS. Spec-wise, it's exactly the same, but with the Yosemite humbucker in the bridge position instead of a single coil. Instead of activating the neck pickup, the push-pull pot splits the bridge without any volume loss, a problem that plagues most guitars with coil split features. Finish-wise, we're looking at aubergine and three-color sunburst with rosewood fingerboards, then black and satin surf green with maple fingerboards. Moving on to the Telecaster. The bridge is a vintage style tele with three brass saddles. The two finishes with rosewood boards are honey burst and satin sonic blue, while the two with maple are vintage white and penny. Next up, the Telecaster Hum, which replaces the Tele single coil with a covered humbucker in the neck position. 
Aubergine and Satin Surf Green come with a rosewood board, and Vintage White and Three Color Sunburst come with maple. The push-pull pot splits the neck humbucker. Then there's the Jazzmaster. Unique to this model is the vintage style six saddle tremolo bridge. The four finishes for this model are Three Color Sunburst, Vintage White, Satin Lake Placid Blue, and Penny and each one of them comes with a rosewood fingerboard. Last up is the Mustang. This one has a vintage style tremolo with six grooved saddles. It comes in the same finishes as the Jazzmaster, three color sunburst, vintage white, satin lake placid blue, and penny, again, all with rosewood fingerboards. I'll admit, to me this one comes across as like the odd one out. I was totally expecting a Jaguar instead, so the Mustang is kind of a cool, unexpected addition to the lineup. The Mustang body has always looked kind of strange and stretched out long ways to me, but it's also cool in like an ugly way. Maybe that's just me. They all have the vintage style large logos, and with the exception of the Telecaster, they have the massive 70s style headstocks as well. I love it. I absolutely love it. Like, no joke, and feel free to judge as much as you want, but that's actually a massive selling point for me. Price-wise, the Jazzmaster MSRP's at $11.99 US, while the rest of the lineup comes in at $10.99. Pretty reasonable for American-made guitars. Now as far as demos go, I don't know. You can tell from the ratio of my Fender to non-Fender videos that I'm not a huge Fender guy, but I kind of really want to try the Telecaster home. I'm a sucker for unique guitars, and you don't see that pickup combination very often. You usually either get the Tele-style single coils or dual humbuckers, it's pretty uncommon to have a combination of the two. Also, I've got a sneaking suspicion that the vintage white one would sound absolutely monstrous through my Marshall back there. I also wouldn't mind taking a look at the Performer Strat and see how it compares to the slightly more expensive American Professional that I found really impressive. So Fender actually reached out to me directly a couple weeks ago asking if I'd like to check out their Mustang GT combo amp. I politely declined. One, I live in an apartment. I can't really demo things with real speakers. Breaking them in pisses off the neighbors. And two, from the viewing analytics, it's very clear you guys much prefer seeing guitars. I asked if we could maybe showcase a player series guitar instead, and they said it might be a possibility, but through a Mustang GT maybe? I told them, I mean, if I can't break in a speaker, it's not gonna sound great, and that might reflect badly on the instrument, so I'd prefer to do it through my own setup. And then, no response. Sent a couple of follow-up emails, and nothing. So let me know in the poll if you want to see some Fender demos, and if so, which series? The more affordable players, the new American performers. If there's enough interest, I'll try and contact them again, and if not, I'll just keep demoing Epiphones and Gibsons, I guess. Uh, I guess the unofficial theme of this video is me complaining about brands not sending me stuff to show you guys. Just for once. Can we have a review without the chug chug drop D or C stuff? It's f***ing awful. Absolutely, and here's how you can make that happen. I'll walk you through it. Go to your internet browser, navigate to your favorite online guitar retailer, find the guitar you're looking for, enter your payment and shipping information. Alternatively, you can also visit a brick and mortar store that has that guitar in stock. When you get the guitar, you can make a video and upload it to YouTube for people to complain about in the comments while consuming your content completely for free. <laughs> but seriously, I don't pretend to be something I'm not. I'm not the most amazing guitarist, nor am I very versatile. I like playing rock and metal riffs, a lot of power chordy stuff, and I've got experience with a lot of guitars. And I like to think that I've gotten pretty good at presenting gear in a way where when you watch one of my videos, you come away with a better understanding of what that guitar or amp or pedal is all about. But it makes absolutely no sense for me to try and be a jazz or a blues player on camera because I'm just not that into those genres of music. And believe me, those demos would suck. A lot of people skip the opening demo track. They just come here because they like the way I break down the specs, my thoughts on the quality, the points of what I like and don't like. Then they go and listen to someone else play it in a style that more closely resembles what they're looking to play on it. It's not that hard and I don't get offended. Music is subjective and we all have different tastes. There's literally no point in coming on here and insulting the music I like to play or listen to. All I get to use public shame. Lawrence. It's not that I'm a closed-minded musician. I try and take bits of inspiration from as many different music forms as I can. I just know myself, and a polka musician, I am not. And also, technically, I don't really use drop D or drop C all that much. Generally, I use drop D flat and drop B, so... Bleh. And that'll do it for this week's episode of Ask a Fish. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. Leave your thoughts and questions in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. You can also hit the little bell for notifications, otherwise it's anyone's guess whether YouTube will actually let you know if a new video is uploaded or not. Links to everything, including social media, our Discord server, and the Patreon page are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching, you've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.